everyone, so today's video is going to be a really highly requested one and I'm going to be talking about my scrapbooking backstory and my tips for anyone who is hoping to start scrapbooking because I get this question a lot. <laughs> I was always a really creative child and it was actually a decade ago that I decided to create my first proper scrapbook. Um, it was a 12 by 12 postbound album and I decided to document my entire life um, from when I was born um, and I still have some of the pages from it now but I dismantled a lot of it um, and yeah that was the first scrapbook I ever made and then I carried on doing that till I was about 13 or 14 I ended up with about five or six albums because you can't fit many pages in a postbound album um, and I didn't come back to it till I was about 17 when I discovered the um, Two Peas in a Bucket YouTube channel. I had never ever seen scrapbooking like it. Um, it was absolutely amazing and so inspirational for me. Um, and I went back and found all my old scrapbooks and took out the pages and took out the photos and decided to start all over again. Um, and it was a bit of a difficult time in my life and I wanted to scrapbook from that point onwards rather than going back again. Um, I did end up going back again in the end, but I created a scrapbook, I think it was again in a postbound album, um, from 17 years old to 18 years old. And it was at that point that I was going off to university and I had what I call scrapbook uncertainty. Um, I really liked a lot of the pages that I was creating, but I just didn't like the album that I was using. I was still using postbound albums and by this point I had documented just over a year and I was already in my third scrapbook album so it was just taking up too many albums and too much space for me um, and I had a look around and I found my perfect scrapbook album. So that is definitely my first tip, have a look around and see which scrapbook albums are out there, which ones you like and decide on the best one for you. Um, I personally use 12 by 12 albums this is my current scrapbook album for 2014 and it's a 12 by 12 album. It's a D ring which is the American style and it's three rings on the inside. I don't know if you can see that but that's what it looks like. I love 12 by 12 albums because for me I scrapbook pretty much my entire life. I do project lifestyle scrapbooking mostly and I honestly <laughs> scrapbook the minute details of everything that goes on um, so 12 by 12 is perfect for me because it's big obviously you can fit a lot of things in and I prefer the D-ring albums to the postbound albums because with a D-ring you can pretty much squish in as many pages as humanly possible um, and I like that because I scrapbook a lot and I don't want to end up with hundreds and hundreds of albums um, just for the space of like two years or something so I personally prefer 12 by 12 album. There are also 8.5 by 11 albums which are about the size of an A4 piece of paper. Um, there's 6 by 6 and 8 by 8. I can't say much about any of those because I don't have them, um, but I imagine they would work best as like mini albums. Um, I don't think I could scrapbook the way I like to in such a small album. Um, but if you're not the sort of person that wants to scrapbook your entire life um, and you don't want to do project lifestyle scrapbooking, there are other options as well. Um, if you're hoping to scrapbook just major events in your life, you could consider something like a La Di Da album. I have five of these. There are six in the range, I believe. These are perfect as mini albums. This is my one that I used to document my holiday to Rome. I think you guys have seen this. Um, but yeah, these are excellent as mini albums and documenting one thing at a time, like a trip, a holiday, a birthday. And the excellent thing about these as well is that there are a whole range of corresponding and coordinating embellishments that go along with them. So you could step foot into hobby Hobbycraft and come out with an entire range of scrapbook items ready to go. Um, and they're really reasonably priced as well. So these are really good if you are wanting to scrapbook just sort of one event at a time or one important thing rather than your whole life. Lastly we have quite a funny little album which I haven't shown you guys yet actually because it only arrived last week but it is the 4x4 We Are Memory Keepers faux leather Instagram albums. These are, as the name suggests, 
perfect for scrapbooking Instagram photos and I think that's something that social media has like encouraged. We take photos all the time but not many people actually print them off and archive them so I'm really glad that We Are Memory Keepers came out with this idea. I think it's brilliant and they have little teeny tiny page protectors in. It's so sweet and again these are perfect for documenting one event so for example my boyfriend and I are going to the Harry Potter studio tour next Sunday and I am going to document it in here because I want it to have its own special album. There will be photos in my Project Life album too, but this is specifically for Harry Potter. Like the Ladi Da albums, they also have corresponding journaling cards and embellishments that go along with them. So I purchased this one which is called the Inked Rose collection and you get 100 journaling cards in 4x4 and 2x2 size. Um, I've also got the Indian Summer one coming to me. Um, but yeah, these are really, really sweet. They coordinate perfectly with the album, they fit perfectly in the album, and it's a ready-made package for someone who's new to scrapbooking and doesn't want to put in loads of time and effort. So yeah, that's my first tip. Decide which album suits you and suits your needs because it kind of affects all of the other supplies that you'll buy. For example, if you want a 12x12 album and you want to make 12x12 layouts, you're going to need to purchase 12x12 scrapbook paper. So it, it kind of affects the embellishments and the supplies that you'll need um, once you've decided on your album. There are just far too many scrapbook supplies for me to go into right now. I would be here all day taking up all of your time, but I have come up with four essentials that for me are, you know, must-haves. I couldn't create my scrapbooks without them. They are 6x6 paper pads, which look like this. Pretty much every scrapbooking collection comes out with a 6x6 paper pad. The reason I love these is because you can cut them down to size to make um, backing for photographs on 12x12 layouts. You can cut them into journaling cards for Project Lifestyle scrapbooking. You could cut them down to 4x4 to fit in a little 4x4 album. I used loads of them in my travel albums. They're just a must have for me and they're cute anyway. Next essential for me anyway is a corner rounder and this is a bit of a random one but basically this is exactly what you think it is. It rounds the corner of paper. Next essential for me is journaling cards. These ones are all from various Gossamer Blue kits that I haven't used up yet but I think journaling cards are an absolute necessity because like the 6x6 paper pads you can use them in every single kind of scrapbooking. Um, you can use them on 12x12 layouts to write your journaling or to use as an embellishment um, to create an actual design aspect on your page. Obviously their main use is in Project Lifestyle scrapbooking which is what I use them for. They'll fit in any other album and again I used countless, countless journaling cards in my travel album. You can pick them up so cheaply, um, I personally like the ones from the Project Life kits and from the Gossamer Blue kit, but I do have, honestly, stacks and stacks of them. I have a lot of them. <laughs> My final necessity is washi tape and pretty self-explanatory, I have a whole entire jar of it and I'm going to need a new jar pretty soon. Um, washi tape is basically coloured sticky tape and patterned sticky tape and who doesn't like that and I have like 40 rolls of the stuff I absolutely adore it um, it's perfect for embellishing pages it's perfect for fastening photos to the page if you run out of glue it's, it's brilliant and I use far too much of it so obviously those four essentials don't include any other embellishments but the reason I picked those is because with any different type of album I could create a good scrapbook layout with those four essentials. So you have the 6x6 paper to create a background or a photo mat, you have your journaling cards to write down anything important or to create a design element for the page, obviously I have my precious corner rounder to round any corners and I have washi tape as a very simple but effective embellishment. So if you're someone who doesn't want to spend loads and loads of money or can't spend loads and loads of money but really wants to start scrapbooking or you just prefer things to look simple 
those are the four essentials that I would go for. Other personal favourites include wood veneer, which I absolutely love. Studio Calico does really good wood veneer, as does Freckled Fawn. And I really like um, ephemera packs as well. They are full to the brim of little paper and cardstock bits and bobs that you can use on your layer. One of the questions I get the most is where do I buy my scrapbook supplies? And I have three or four places that I get nearly everything from. Um, every single month I get a Gossamer Blue kit delivered to my door and that comes all the way from America so I know that's not an option for a lot of people but scrapbooking kits are absolutely fabulous if you don't have the time to go out and buy a load of stuff. Um, they work perfectly for project life for me because every single month I get my kit and that will do me for the month. Um, I am excessive and I like to have lots of supplies so um, I could live off just my Gossamer Blue kits but I choose not to um, and that costs £20 a month um, and that's my personal like main bulk of my supplies but I also order a lot um, of things online. Hey Little Magpie which used to be Sarah's cards is probably my personal favourite. They carry all of the American brands which I absolutely love. I can get those on Paper Maze and Hey Little Magpie and I'll try and remember to leave the links in the description. Hobbycraft is good for basic things but not very good for specific companies and brands that you might be looking for. If there's something really specific I'm looking for then I tend to look on Amazon first, you can sometimes find it for cheap. These albums for example, the other colours of this album are actually being sold for cheaper on Amazon than they are anywhere else. So. If you're interested in one of these, have a look on Amazon first. And finally, a lot of people ask me where I get my inspiration from, and like I said at the beginning of the video, I think two peas in a bucket were my scrapbooking gods, and I'm so sad that they don't upload anymore. Two peas in a bucket actually closed down, which is really sad. But their channel is still up, I think, and they have years worth of amazing inspirational videos on there, so definitely go and check that out. So I've tried to keep this as short as possible because I have such a bad migraine um, from yesterday, and I really just want to go to sleep. But I really, really hope this helped you, and that you enjoyed this video, and that some of you will be inspired to start scrapbooking. I'll see you next time.